<laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I am ecstatic. Oh my God. This dude from South Africa, yeah, he is absolutely killing the game of rap and hip hop over there. And we have the pleasure of he interviewing him today kind of thing on the show. So with no further ado, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How you doing, man? Have I got that right? Are you from Are you from South Africa? Um, yeah, actually, I am from South Africa. I'm from a small area called uh, Johannesburg. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've been based there for some time. In fact, for years now. Nice. Um, and also, um, as much as most people, when when you pronounce it on your end. It's metaphors, but when I pronounce it on my end, it's metaphors. You know, Meta. Um, oh, yeah. So, I was, I was so, just sorry. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. No, I was, I was about to say that um, most people pronounce it with a T, but I spell it with a D, D. as in yes, because it's I, 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 I kill, kill, kill. That's what I call, consider myself <laughs> to be doing. <laughs> Okay, because was but the first question was going to be like, was um, you know, how you came up with your stage name? Um, funny enough, I didn't even come up with a stage name myself. Um, it was given to me by, let's say, um, an old school friend of mine. Um, because mm-hmm. you know we grew up doing the ciphers and the raps, mm-hmm. and um, this guy used to say to me, "Hey, you, you, you murder. We are murder, and I'm a murder force. So it's Zulu." It means you murder with metaphors, and nice. that's how it became metaphors. Okay, yeah, I get yeah. it. Metaphors, yeah. I shall be sure yeah. to pronounce it correctly because you are a superstar, honest to goodness. Like that, I was listening to the tracks, yeah. and I appreciate that. <laughs> yo, every single track that I was listening to, I mean, the beats, the beats are tough for one, and then your yeah. rap on there kind of thing, your delivery is so fantastic kind of thing, it's like, it's not mumba rap at all kind of thing, like, you kill off yeah. them, them mumba rappers kind of thing and tell them to come out of here because, like, oh my god so, how long have you been making music? Sure, well I spent my first um, rap on a beat in 2010. So I could say it's been 12 years that I've been making music, but nice. the scene in South Africa is so split because there's there's the mainstream, there's the underground, there's the vernacular, there's the the English, there's the swag rap. There's, so there's so many different um, styles of rap. Um, it makes it hard for you to actually just find one artist and follow that artist because it 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 takes consistency to actually get to where I am right now. For real. So what's the what's the music yeah. scene like there on um in in in, in um at Johannesburg? In South Africa. Um, I like the fact that you even asked in Johannesburg particularly because throughout the country the scene is so different. But in Joburg itself, um, currently there is a wave of. UK drill that is um, coming in. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 seems, it seems you guys from UK are doing something right. And, <laughs> and oh um, a lot of South Africans are jumping on it, you know? Okay. A lot of South Africans are jumping on it. Um, they do it in Vanak, they do it in English, they do it in um, Sutu, they do it in Zulu. So that's what's currently happening in um, in the SA. Uh, Joburg scene, although there are other um, artists that are doing alternative raps, um, people who are outside of the the mainstream style. I, I know of a cat called Eon. He calls himself That Bro Eon. Okay. Um, he does some, some nice stuff. You get things I can't just think of cats at the top of my head outside of That Bro Eon because he's the one guy who's been consistent that I've been following and checking out as well and is that eon spelled with e-o-e-o-n basically yeah yeah e-o-n okay i definitely have to look him up for sure for sure Um, in fact fact, i'm sorry to disturb you if you want to look him up check him out as that bro eon um it's one word that's 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 who you'd probably pick up okay okay yeah I definitely have to um to give it a search on the um on the old uh, Instagram and, and yeah. whatnot kind yeah. of thing. 
Yeah, please so, do. When did, when did you know that you have something special? Like, when? what was the catalyst? When did you know that, okay, this is music and this is what I want to do, this is what my talent is, and so I'm going to pursue this? Um, I didn't know. I didn't know until I was doing it. Okay. You know, um, what happened is I grew up, there used to be an old school Sprite ad um, and from America where these guys, they are in a studio and it's like they're throwing words around and they are rapping. Okay. And when I was, I think I was 11 or 12 um, in primary school where we did something called a show and tell. And that became part of my show and tell. Okay. And just based off the fact that I enjoyed the rapping then, I didn't even know that I was rapping. It's only later on, once I started doing poetry and going to ciphers, that I um, started falling in love with the art itself. But I never, ever thought I would want to do music until I actually started doing music. So this was 2010 when um, the first beat I, I jumped on was done by my brother. Okay. So you so the music runs in the family? Yeah, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so who inspires you and motivates you and why? Um, when you say who inspires me, do you mean generally in life or do you mean um, in creating music? Yeah, I mean, um, like, uh, um, other rappers out there, um, where do you draw your inspiration from? Like, um, like who, who, who gives you like, oh my gosh, if I had that track, I'd be t like, he is so tough kind of thing. For me, like beats wise, it's like Timberland, Missy Elliott, mm, Pharrell. Mm, um, mm. And so for you, okay, who, okay. Who, 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 do you um, who do you, who do you aspire towards? There's different influences because I'm from a country that speaks so many languages. Mm -hmm. I am able to take um, influences from outside, which is internationally, and take influence from within uh, my locale, which is South Africa itself mm -hmm. and Africa, you know, as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so, as far as where did I or who was my first inspiration when I started doing the raps, I could quote your your Nas, your Biggies. Yo, I used to listen to Cannabis, I used to listen to Immortal Technique, mm. I used to listen to Last Emperor, Killer Priest, your Wu-Tangs, you know, uh -huh. the, 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 the typical American hip-hop that most of us were introduced to, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then locally, I, I grew up listening to your H2Os. There was a, there was a, um, a very dope artist and MC called Pro Kid. Um, I've, I've listened, I, I grew up on Proverb, I grew up on Zab's The Last Letters, but now I draw inspiration from my everyday life, from the people around me, from my surroundings, because I, I learned how to write stories or how to deliver verses on a beat through those um, artists that I just named. Mm. But as far as drawing the inspiration, it cannot come from them because I have my own story to tell. I've got my own life that I'm living. I've got my own book that I'm writing. So yeah. hence, I cannot write from their perspective. I can only use their reference as far as their writing style, but yeah. I can only put my content on there. So yeah, um, I guess... I, I, I just draw inspiration from the people around me, my wife, my life, my kids, your everyday struggle, my friends. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I don't I don't even draw anything from current affairs. I don't even watch the news, man. I'm one oh, of those no. people who um, I choose what news I want to watch. I mean, we are at a time and age where everything can be picked off whatever feed, you know? Mm, yeah, for so, real. Yeah, there's there's a lot of propaganda, so I don't get influenced by anything else um, outside of my everyday living with my family and uh, my peoples. I hear that. I hear that. So, you know, you were saying that you did poetry kind of thing initially kind of thing. Do you think that the poetry really helped in the way your cadence is kind of thing and the way you um, you write? I'd say it played a huge role, yes. No, um, because, you know, you, as a poet, you... you there's this thing about rhyming. You need you you want to rhyme at the end. 
you know, or you want to say something that makes sense, but also it should be deep, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, it did play a huge role. For instance, um, I, I still remember one of the poems I wrote back then. Um, it went something like, life is a blessing. And every single foot put wrong is a lesson. Every single thing that you do should be pleasant. Today is a gift, the present. So just those four stanzas. Um, <laughs> I thank you. I thank you, man. <laughs> I wrote that, I think, some 30 odd years back, maybe 20 wow. something years back, but it's been a long time ago. And from that, I, I tried to to learn how to deliver it in a rap sense. So okay. it became it became life is a blessing and every single foot put wrong is a lesson. Every single thing that you do should be pleasant. Today is a gift, the present. So just, it, it, it's the same verse or it's the same four lines, but the delivery is different. Yeah. I, I had to come from a poetic um, writing style to be able to deliver in that manner because I don't know a lot of these cats just they just rhyme without making sense you know especially these mumble rap cats oh my god they're not, they're not I don't even know what the hell most of us are talking <laughs> about kind of thing because I mean for me I feel like um you know we will be mentioned before like you know uh, Wu-Tang and Nas yeah. and that kind of thing I think yeah. rap from them days yeah. definitely changed because you know a yeah. lot of the people back then were rapping about real life and about what's going on yeah. saying, fuck the police kind of thing and what can we do yeah. to change the society and now yeah. they're rapping about oh my Bugatti that they can't afford the chains around yeah. the neck that they can't afford the girls that they got that can't yeah. afford and I'm just like, what's, what's going on in, in rap song? Where did it change? Where, where did we lose the storytelling, the painting of the picture mentally? Where do we lose the the poetry in the music? Now there's there's no poetry anymore in hip hop. It's mm. lost the essence of hip hop. And this is why I rate people like yourself kind of thing, and artists like yourself that are really sticking true to the art of form of rap, of a hip hop kind of thing, saying something that is going to, you know what I mean? Like stir, stir the water to somebody, do you know? I'm humbled. I'm humbled. I mean, I I think it's because I come from a time uh, where we we used to paint pictures. You, you'd close your eyes and listen to Nas mm-hmm. and Nas would paint a picture in your in your mind. For instance, if he says, Pacino lights, Gio Roll could see no dice at the Mirage, Vegas strip, neon lights, flashing, cameras. In your head, you are seeing, seeing it. You are, you are seeing this thing that's happening. But now it's... <laughs> Like, <laughs> like what? There's no picture in it. It's a mess. It's no a emotions, mess. no feelings, and so yeah, yeah man. Uh, there's no story. Love it. I, lo- I, lo- I, lo- yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think we have to draw a lot from the past kind of thing to know where we're going in the future, you know. Um, yeah. So what do your friends and your parents and your family and stuff, what, what are their thoughts um, about your music career? Are they supportive? Do you get, do you receive a lot of support from, from, from your family? From my parents? No, no. Um, I, you know, African parents have got this thing that, Music is is it's a hobby. It's, yeah, it's not a, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not work. It's not a career. It's it's a hobby. You should it, it, anything that is artistic or that is creative is seen as a hobby. Whether yeah. you paint or you do photography or you do videography or you or it's music, but they were and I understand where our parents come from. They come from a from a time where they were told you need to go to school mm. so that you can find a good job. Yeah. And to them, a job is either you are a teacher, you are a policeman, you are a lawyer, you are a doctor, doctor. you are a mechanic, <laughs> you are an engineer. <laughs> engineer. Yeah, you yeah. Understand? So they've, they've, um, they haven't given us the flexibility to be anything outside of that. Hence, when we come up and say, Mom, I want to do music. The first thing is, do you want to go into drugs? <laughs> do you want to do a <laughs> that, that, was, that was literally what happened to me um, when I spoke to him. And, and, and the funniest story is, um, 
I remember when I was growing up, I asked my mother to get me a piano. You know, because <laughs> yeah. um, I was in love with playing keys. I asked my mother to get me a piano, and I was in grade ten. So when I when I passed or when I graduated my grade 10, I was supposed to get the piano because she had promised me that. Mm -hmm. And when I went back to her at the end of the year and I was like, mom, remember you promised me a piano when I passed? And she said to me, you were passing for yourself. You weren't (laughs) doing this for me. So I felt felt like I was tricked into performing, (laughs) you know? Like, wow. I completely understand. Yeah, yeah. So my parents, they they don't they don't really um, take it seriously. Um, I'm humbled to have a brother who does the same thing, you mm-hmm. know. Um, mm-hmm. um, so we support each other. I've got a wife who supports me. I've got friends who support me. I've got relatives um, who support me. But as for my parents, they are the last people that I actually look to to support it's very sad but it's 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 the reality of Listen, i can completely relate i can completely relate yeah. my mom um my mom's jamaican yeah. kind of thing i mean i was raised in jamaica yeah. and yeah. and so it's basically the same ideology kind of thing you either a doctor um a mechanic yeah. or an engineer and if you i remember when i asked my mom for a keyboard and she was like oh my god my son won't play devil music yeah. and I, Definitely. Wow. Like, how did you get there? Like, uh, <laughs> you know, you know? <laughs> I completely That's understand, I man. <laughs> I remember, yeah. um, so what um what are some of the challenges that you faced as um a hip hop artist in Joburg kind of thing or in South Africa? Well, one, hip hop being a very competitive sport internationally already, okay. you know. Mm-hmm. Um when you get to the Joburg scene there's there's battle rap just like in the UK there's battle rap there's commercial rap there's so also here in in um in Joburg or in SA there's there's the battle rap there's the vernacular rap which is Zulu or Sutu or Kosa rap um there's your swag rap so with all of them you find this division because the swag rappers don't like the vernacular rappers the vernacular rappers don't like your urban rappers your urban rappers don't like your southern rappers so it it becomes that whole complicated scene where the one challenge it it creates is that now you there's no unity so you you find yourself looking for somewhere to belong to mm-hmm. when you actually will never find anywhere to belong to. Okay. That's the challenge. Yeah, there's there's no way. Like you get artists that are big in SA, like your uh, there's a guy called Casper, there's a guy called AKA, there's a guy called Questa. And those guys all do different styles, you know? Mm-hmm. Um there's no there's no one particular style. No. It just depends on who's watching you, who's vibing with you, um, if you can market yourself well enough, you know, promote yourself. Um, there's a lot of whack cats out here that are getting the cheddar. They're making the money. They're getting the stage performances. But you can't be against them because maybe their marketing tactic is on point, you know? True that. True um, that. So you, it, it, that's the challenge. The biggest challenge is actually jumping onto the main scene because it's flooded with everyone wanting to jump on and even guys with no talent are making. Well, we see that all the time kind of thing with the internet, you know what I mean? Which is my next question about how do you feel social media has impacted the industry? I mean, for me, as as like a a singer kind of producer, I've noticed that there are so many rubbish singers on Mm -hmm. the internet and on social media who who have hundreds of thousands of followers. And I'm like... How are you doing this? So how do you find um, social media and the internet kind of thing for, you know, music? For promoting myself. It's, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging. Thing is, you know, when you come from uh, an age where social media found you on earth or it found you moving, um, it's, social media is younger than I am. Hence, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of things that I am doing wrong. And I, I acknowledge that I'm doing them wrong because I should actually be, 
using social media. Social media is like that younger brother or that younger sister of yours who keeps reminding you that, hey, there's new ideas. Yeah. Hey, there's a fresh yeah. pair of sneakers. Hey, there's a fresh pair of... But because I'm so old school, I need to get out of that mindset of telling my younger brother, hey, you found me here on earth. Hey, I've been doing this, so I don't have to listen to you. That's that's the challenge that I'm having with social media. Um, I'm just not, I'm not grasping it. I'm not finding my feet. And um, it, it poses a huge challenge. I can completely relate to kind of things. It's the same for me. I'm like 42. And um, yeah. so when the, when the social media came, I was already an adult. Do you know what I mean? In my 20s, in the clubs, dancing my, yeah. my, my, my eyes. Do you know what I mean? So like, so when now the, the young people are like, oh, you should, you should be on social media more and whatnot. I'm like, well, how? I don't know. What I found with it kind of thing is that it has really affected the attention span of people and yes. especially the young the younger generation where yes. it's like 10 seconds 20 seconds and that's all they can take so that that yes. means that a track that is supposed to be three and a half minutes long now gets whittled down to 15 seconds for insta for an instagram reel or a tiktok reel and you're not really listening yeah. to the actual music you, you're more like looking at the visuals kind of thing of yeah. that of that piece yeah. of, of thing and then in the, that's what they're doing now. Um, they're going more visual than audio. That's mm. where they're winning, they're winning because social media wants more um, visual. It wants you to sit down and watch, you know? Unlike with uh, with us, we, we came from a time where we had Walkmans, we had stereos. Yeah. We had, you, know, you just pop it into your ear, you pop your headsets in, onto your head and you move. But now you must watch and watching is a whole different game. And that's why it's always going to be a challenge for us. For real. Oh, man. Yeah. Bring, bring in the young assistants, I say. <laughs> I say, kind of thing. Um, but we, we need to get with it. Eh? We, we need to find a way of, even though we don't necessarily push our music fully through it, but let's push the content because they can, there could be a thousand other things that we can do as content to push traffic towards the music. True. True that. Yeah. True that. So let tell me now who it will be your dream collab in the in, as a rapper or, or or collabing with a producer. I'm gonna go off the bat and say anything with a boom bap vibe. So there's a guy called um Dylan Cooper. Okay. Um Dylan Cooper's nice, he's from the US. I've I've listened to some to, to a couple UK cats. It's just I can't remember the names off the top of my head. Thing is, also with with the UK, the, the accent, um, the accent becomes a challenge for South Africans because we are so used to American yeah, um, vernacular. Yes, yes. So even listening to you now. I can already pick up that, oh, I'm not speaking to someone from America because <laughs> yeah. your, your dialect and, and, and how you speak and how you articulate yourself is different. Um, you even sound, I don't want to sound, say you sound formal, but you, you sound, you sound, you sound like a serious guy <laughs> yeah. compared to, there's no slang. I haven't picked up any, you know, slang or it's, that's the one thing that I can say. Um, so to respond to you, sorry, sometimes I just drift off. <laughs> <That's so good. laughs> but, but to respond to you, my dream collaboration producer wise would be anything with Ninth Wonder, anything with Apollo Brown, mm. anything with not DJ Premier, because yeah, he does boom bap, but it's very raw. I, I'm more for. I love. I love the soulful hip hop sound. I, I'd probably be listening to your 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 common sense. I'd be listening to your um, most deaf. So those are probably my dream collaborations internationally. Nice. Of course, I could never leave Nas out. Anything with Nas on, I would die for yes yes i mean i just can't wait for these guys because i know that all of them are working on music at the moment it's just that they're waiting for the time to actually release it any kind of thing to get this this this, this new fangled thing and how they're gonna market their stuff kind of things so, those collaborations sound heavy and i can really i mean like if you had a collaboration with nas whoo, 
Ooh, sir. That would you be think? the dopest. That would be no, so man, dopest. don't play like that. <laughs> he would, though, I swear. <laughs> for real, dog. Oh, man, thank you. I'm humbled. For real, for real. Um, I'm humbled. So, okay, then, cool. So the last question I've got for you is, what's your current project? I mean, what are you pushing out there at the moment or what are you working on? Um, I just dropped The Calling, uh, which is what got us to this interview. Okay. Um, and then now what's happening is I've been doing a lot of features, but on other people's projects. Mm-hmm. I've been doing a lot of features on other people's projects. I am currently working on uh, The Calling 2, which is eight tracks. I think it's eight to nine tracks, but it's just myself and featuring other people. If nice. if you notice, um, on the one that I dropped, it's four tracks and it's just myself. I did that on purpose because I wanted people to hear me and get a feel of who I am and my style and my content. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm working on The Calling 2, I, I want people to hear what I sound like when I get my family involved, when I get my peoples involved, because my style also changes depending on who I'm with on a track. So yeah, yeah that's what I'm working on. I'm working on The Calling 2, which was supposed to drop um, this month since it's my birthday month. Actually, wow, my birthday was two days ago on the 19th. Oh, wow. Um, I'm off schedule. Yeah, I'm off schedule. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah, that's, I was supposed to drop that for my birthday as a, as a present to myself. Um, it's late. No, you said I'm looking forward to it kind of thing. I mean, I've listened to the calling. It's the call, the calling, yeah. it's got I write on it, right? Yes, yes, it's got I write. My on goodness. It. So um, I was listening to that and you drop a lyric saying that you speak in cuneiform. And when I heard that, I was like, um, this gives us next uh, levels. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Like, yeah, man. Like I, me... I think I say something like um I don't spit but I speak in cuneiform. Yes. When I raise the bar, I could lift it in many forms. What? It's like, that's that's basically it's I'm old school. Like I keep saying I'm old school like that. Yeah, um, man. that's basically what the bar is saying. To say I'm I'm nothing like your new school cats. I'm oh, I'm ancient school actually. In fact, let's listen to that right now, kind of thing. Let's listen to that right now because I really need to hear that line. I think I think it's the dawn. Um, just check out the dawn. I think that's verse two when verse two comes on okay. on the dawn. That yeah, that's that. Okay, then cool. So let's listen to the dawn right now. Hey yo, Meta Mer. Capital M, 13th letter. Shout out West Side Tie for the beat. It's the dawn. I'm trying to tell my truth every time I'm in the booth. Black magic's the art that I practice. Living in a matrix of underhanded tactics. Ticking niggas off like I'm working on a checklist. Punchline slinging, I'm bringing verbal attacks. My team stay winning, work harder than lumberjacks. All you dead wood rappers, get you up with the axe. I make a lame push back, like your hairstyle, you relax. I don't spit, but I speak in cuneiform. When I raise the bar, I could lift it in many forms. Put swag, clean drip in my zone. Feeling wavy like a goodbye on the phone Looking at your cats in debt Better pay attention, never forget the vet Put me in your mentions 2018 capsule put me on Made it to the top six though I didn't have a song You can call me the dawn or call me the beast But if you see me on the streets, homie call the police They say I'm off the chains like I broke off a leash I'm effing up the game now, comprende capiche So you can call me the dawn or call me the beast But if you see me on the streets, homie call the police they say I'm off the chains like a broke of a leash I'm effing up the game now, comprende capiche yeah. When I speak, I preach I drop a verse on the pulpit Son of a gun, guess my pops is a full clip Simple mathematics, subtract your goons When you get 8 like 16, divide by 2 Ayo, hey, I'm icy I could make you sleep with the Pisces Strip too sick, pen leave a nigga 6 feet Forget beef, I'm feeding niggas a salad Body count, here's another one like DJ Khaled Styles intense like Arabs The level I'm on, a vow is close to heaven Now who's that? Stepping on the sea Leave you blue black while I'm puffing on the green Sticky yicky like a hippie My ink hits the pad, dog. I burst
birth poetry A lyrical genius, Einstein with the pen, G A pen picks, write code like Da Vinci Show me who better than M, body a nigga quick You can call me the dawn or call me the beast But if you see me on the streets, homie, call the police They say I'm off the chains like I broke off a leash I'm effing up the game now, comprende capiche So you can call me the dawn or call me the beast But if you see me on the streets, homie, call the police They say I'm off the chains like I broke off a leash I'm effing up the game now, comprende capiche I'm effing up the game I'm effing up the game, yo I'm effing up the game I'm messing up the game, y'all. <laughs> oh man, yo, shit, man, I'm messing up the game. <laughs> yeah. All right then, yeah. So tell us about the done. What, what, what inspired you to write such beautiful melodies? And um, um so, I mean, the articulation yeah. is so fantastic, man. Tell us about that. Um, to be quite honest with you, when I got the dawn, it was initially of a some some dude dropped a mixtape mm-hmm. um, online with a guy called Westside Tai. He's from South Africa as well. Okay. He's from Kimberen, KwaZulu Natal. That's another province in South Africa. Um, so he dropped this beat tape online. It had like fifteen beats, and of the the beat tape, I fell in love with two beats. Funny enough, those two beats were No Else and The Dawn. Okay. Um, and when I heard that, it, it sounded very boom bapish and it's home for me. That's mm. that's my comfort zone, King. I don't want to lie. That is my comfort zone. Um, anything that's boom bap. Hence, it became easy for me to just want to tell people who I am. And um, The Dawn came about as that, to say, you may have heard me before on other people's stuff. You may have heard me before on some other stuff I've dropped before that. But this is where I'm at now. And I'm saying I'm the dawn. You can call me the beast. You can call me the dawn. But when you see me on the streets, homie, call the police. Basically, that was it. <laughs> so, hey, I'm too raw, man. Like, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. it, was that. it was just that. I mean that stuff that is it's just so awesome and I mean I mean I love hip hop like this kind of thing because you're talking and you're talking sense and it resonates do you know what I mean like I can feel that right in my solar plexus because you're talking and you're not mumbling you're not mumbling your words you're actually talking about lyrics and and life and and, and everyday life that we all go through and I think as a grown person I, I think any uh, it's grown folks music is what you're making grown folks music and I love every bit of it so yeah, oh my gosh you. Metaphors, thank you yeah. so much for this time that you've spent with us, man. I, I'm like, I really appreciate it so thank much. You, man. Thank you, man. I mean, I would have never thought that um, I could get my my stuff out there in the UK or anyone in the UK to even hear um, a snippet of it. And just to know that there's people outside of SA that are actually appreciating what I'm doing. It, it, it humbles me. It humbles me. I swear, man. I literally like every time I go to a studio, cause I've had your stuff now for about a week. And um, yeah. every time I'm like getting ready to go in the studio, I'm playing no L's kind of thing because there is no L's. It's just bare W's up in this bitch. Right. You so, know, <laughs> so <laughs> let us, um, let us go out actually kind of thing with no L's for the people them to hear it. I am so chuffed and so glad kind of thing that you came in with us thank you so much once more um and we're gonna leave the audience with no l bless up yo have yourselves a good one guys thank you my nigga thank you my king no worries no worries Black coat, clean drip, black coat Black is the colour of my skin And with that beam, man, I'm black gold Slowly developed a backbone When I realised what the black mean I studied my own soul Try to connect with the melanin Discovered the books that they won't teach Cause they all preach we were black kings They call me a black sheep And I'm highly driven like I chill in the backseat Proud black and you do see How I'm germinating like a black seed I'm a black being, nigga, poke me Steady flowing like the black sea but I get dope on some salivage. Make it fit some fun at the Hadi. Shaman of Saflo, I'll be so lively. 
Kafuli kwe bunga madi Tu kulu mawa migli mala bokas Liko police station iba yi Tu kutimbu la langa kitanga tas Tengi chedi nda babo mayas I ain't gotta take no ounce I tell you I'm coming for double juice I ain't gotta take no ounce But I really wanna puff that L Get a two pool choke on loud ass God why I really gotta go through hell I never really been a kiss and tell I got a many many ways as well And I really wanna do so well Now God what I gotta do for me to excel You see the struggle turn me to an animal Tryna get the paper to the Zilima Bigger switcher you can call me general Masik figure me no sazu dedica Dana ba zala hake na ba fana ya na ba na ba to patela When they pay dues, I get paid, dude. Now I'm stacking up all the Mandela's. I ain't gotta take no L's. I tell you, I'm gunning for double dues. I ain't gotta take no L's. I ain't gotta take no L's. I ain't gotta take no L's. I tell you, I'm gunning for double dues. I ain't gotta take no L's. I ain't gotta take no L's. I ain't gotta take no L's. I tell you, I'm gunning for double dues. I ain't gotta take no L's. I ain't gotta take no L's. I ain't gotta take no L's. I tell you, I'm gunning. For double use, I ain't gotta take no L's. I ain't gotta take no L's. I don't gotta take no L's. Off that hell. Choke on loud ass car vibe, but I gotta go through hell.